Welcome back to Langchain Zero to Hero. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at agents. To start off, let's hop into ChatGPT to explain why agents might be necessary. Consider the simple question, what is the weather in New York? ChatGPT is not going to be able to give us an adequate answer to this question, but let's think about why. An LLM has no internet access. And what this means is that without external tooling, it's unable to answer questions beyond its training data. This is where tools like Langchain agents come into play. They allow LLMs to run custom functions, including things like executing custom Python, accessing APIs, and searching the web. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that in only a few lines of code. Let's get started. Let's get started in Visual Studio Code. Before you begin, remember to look in the link in the description for the GitHub repository, which will contain a full walkthrough of today's tutorial and any code that you might need. To get started, let's open a terminal and install our poetry environment. This is going to include all of the dependencies that we're going to need for today's code. Next, poetry install. This will create a virtual environment containing all of the dependencies that we've just talked about installed and ready for use. Once Poetry has finished installing, let's make sure that we have our prerequisites for the rest of this project. One of these is going to be the OpenAI API key. You can use a different LLM provider if you like, but for this instance, I'm going to be using the uh, ChatGPT 3.5 model. To get started, let's make sure that we have created our Langchain Zero to Hero Agents folder with a source folder inside of it, and within that, our main.py file. Again, you can use a different file structure if you like, but this will be the one that we're following for today's tutorial. The first thing that we're going to want to do in our main.py file is import the dependencies. Now, to get started, what we're going to do is create a simple script which can um, allow us to run the agent arbitrarily. Later on, we're going to extend this into a LangServe API that we can then access via the playground. But first of all, let's just look at the agent on its own. Some of these independencies that we're installing is the LangSmith hub, the agent executor and the tool decorator, the XML agent output parser, the chat OpenAI uh, object, which allows us to access the OpenAI API, and finally, the DuckDuckGo search results. Now, what we'll be doing today is creating an agent which is able to access the internet via DuckDuckGo, which if you're not aware, is a search engine very much like Google. The reason why we're not using Google or any other competitor is because DuckDuckGo lets us access their API for free without an API key, meaning it'll be the easiest for you to get started with. The first thing that we're going to do within this script is instantiate our GPT model. We're going to do this by saying model equals chat open AI model, uh, setting the model attribute as GPT 3.5 turbo, the temperature as zero, and we're going to enable streaming. The next thing that we're going to want to do is pull down a prompt from the model prompt hub. Now you'll remember in the previous episode, we explained how the Langsmith prompt hub works. What we're going to be doing today is pulling down one such example prompt. We'll be pulling down Harrison Chase's XML agent conversation. Let's hop into Langsmith and we can read through what this prompt actually does. Looking at this prompt in the Langsmith playground, we can take a look at how it works. You can see that this simply works as a uh, system prompt for a chat model. We define a helpful assistant and we provide it with an input, which is a list of tools that the agent has access to. We then explain that in order for the LLM to access these tools, it's going to need to specify the tool and the tool inputs using XML tags. It is then going to expect to receive a response in the observation XML tags. And then there is a simple example where we say that we can use the search tool with a input, which is a text query, what is the weather in San Francisco, to which we can expect to receive an observation of 64 degrees Fahrenheit. 
We then say that once uh, that we're done, we're going to want to respond with a final answer XML tag, which is going to contain the response that we should then return to the user. We provide the chat history for the model and then some information about what the user's question is. Pulling all this back into the example we're going to be working with today, we can actually use this prompt entirely verbatim. Instead of having a uh, search tool which is going to return weather information, we're actually going to allow the model to search for anything that we like. Uh, but this prompt will still work since uh, our 3.5 Turbo model will be able to adapt. Moving back into Visual Studio Code, let's actually write our tool function. Now, the way this is going to work is going to be surprisingly simple to follow along with. We're going to want to define a simple Python function, which is going to receive an input from the LLM and then return a usable output. Let's see what this might look like. We can define a search function expecting a query, which is a string, and then we're going to return a string as a response. One of the most important things about working with Langsmith agents or Langchain agents is the doc string. This is going to be the information which is going to explain to the uh, agent, to the LLM, what kind of tool uh, this search function is and how it should be used. What we're going to say here is this function allows us to search about things with duck, duck, go search engine. These descriptions can be useful since it's uh, possible to provide multiple tools to a single LLM, meaning it then needs to know which, what each of the tools does in order to uh, pick the right one for the right job. Now, this is where our DuckDuckGo search results import is going to come in handy. We're going to instantiate an instance of this object and we're going to say search equals <clears throat> these search results. And since we're already using search as the name of our function, we're actually just going to say underscore search to make it unique. We're then going to want to return underscore search dot run. And then within it, we're going to want to pass our query. Reading through this function, we can see that we are creating a search tool, which accepts a query, which is a string, and we're going to be returning a string. This doc string describes that the function searches about things with the DuckDuckGo search engine. We create an instance of the DuckDuckGo search engine. Remember to have the uh, brackets on the end to actually instantiate it as an object. And then we're going to say, using our search object, we're going to run a query, and that's going to return search results. These search results are going to contain snippets of the pages that are returned, and they're also going to contain some sources about what web page was used to get those results. The final thing we need to remember is we need to add the at tool decorator to our function. And what this is going to do is allow Langchain and Langchain agents to access this function and use it within an LLM. Next, we need to create some helper functions to allow our agent to turn this search uh, function into something that can then be used within a chain. I'm going to copy and paste in these functions and then we're going to talk through them one by one. First of all, we want to create a list, our tool list, which is only going to contain our search query or our search query function. This it could also contain multiple other functions but in this case, we're only going to work with one function for this agent. We then define the function convert intermediate steps, which is going to take a series of intermediate steps and convert it into some XML tool format. This is part of the internals of how the Langchain agent is going to be able to cycle and work with uh, tools and be able to process these uh, tools into, uh, run these tool functions and process them into observations. And finally, we're going to create the function convert tools, which is going to create a list of, uh, which is going to accept a list of tools and are going to convert these into a list that can then be uh, injected into the prompt to give a tool name and a tool description so that the LLM can pick which tool from the list of available tools that it has, it wants to run in any given situation. 
Now our helper functions are defined and we've created our model, we're ready to actually create our LangChain chain. This is going to be using the LangChain expression language, uh, which is a way of creating tools and concatenating different functions together. If we look at a simple agent, we can see that uh, it accepts an input, which is going to be the input coming from the user, and it's going to accept a uh, a variable agent scratch pad. Now this agent scratch pad is actually going to be part of how the LLM is able to loop around on itself using the same prompt multiple times in order to reach a result. The way that agents work is they continuously rerun the same prompt passing in some information from the previous execution of the run in order to get results. It doesn't, uh, if you thought that the LLM might actually pause and wait to hear back from the response of a function, that's not quite how it works. We actually execute the, uh, the entire LLM once in order to see which function the uh, agent may want to run or if it has a final response to return to the user. And then depending upon that, we are able to either rerun the prompt from the beginning, returning some of the information from a given tool or a series of tools which may have been run by the agent and combining that into the agent scratch pad, which is kind of like the working memory of the LLM. Or we can choose to simply exit the process uh, with our final answer and return to the user. What this looks like is this overall chain. Some of the important steps here is taking our prompt um, and adding in the list of tools from our tool list. And as we discussed, this convert tools function takes the name of a tool and its description, which comes from the doc string, and then ex uh, combines it into a list that can then be inserted into the prompt. And then model.bind, some stop words, tool input, and final answer. Whenever we see the closing tag of tool input, we know that we want to stop the current execution of the LLM. We want to evaluate its output and then we want to execute that tool which it's chosen to um, uh, query. Or if we have the uh, closing tag of a final answer, we know that the LLM has actually generated the information that it needs in order to respond to the user and so we then want to return that. And in order to process these XML tags, we're using the XML agent output parser, which is then going to take in the final output of the model and then decide whether it needs to loop back around to the beginning with perhaps the actual output of the uh, given tool, or if it needs to return its response to the user. Additionally, we're going to want to then compile this agent chain into an agent executor, which is going to accept our agent, our tools list, and we're going to set verbose to true in order to see what's going on behind the scenes. Finally, we're going to want to create an if condition, if name equals main. And what this does is when we run the script in uh, our terminal, it's going to detect that we're running the script directly as opposed to importing it. And it's going to invoke our agent executor with the simple question, what's the weather in New York? Now remember, ChatGPT was not able to answer this question, so why don't we try giving our script to go here and seeing if it's actually able to work now that we're connecting our LLM with DuckDuckGo's search capabilities. Going into our terminal, let's clear the terminal and then run poetry, run Python, and then we're going to want to move into our Langchain Zero to Heroes agent folder, the source folder, and then we want to target main.py. If we hit run, it's going to take a few seconds for the agent to uh, start up and then iterate itself at least twice. Remember the first time it's going to want to identify that it needs to use the search tool. And then the second time it's going to look at the result of that search tool, say, we don't need to ask any more questions. We have the result here. Let's pass that information returned by DuckDuckGo and then answer the original question that the user had in a final response. After the agent has started up, we can see we're starting to get some feedback from the agent. And after we enter the new agent executor chain, we can actually get a response quite quickly. First of all, we're going to be using the search tool and the input, whether in New York, in order to 
get some search results, which is going to return this list of snippets, which is going to have various information. And then we're going to see that the final answer returned by the agent is the weather in New York is currently six degrees with sunny intervals changed into cloudy by lunchtime. This is great. We can now see that the chain is able to access the internet, but let's make sure that this isn't a hallucination. Let's visit one of uh, a website and let's see what the weather in New York actually is. Remember, the art agent is thinking that New York City is currently six degrees with sunny intervals, changing to cloudy by lunchtime. Let's switch on over to Chrome and look at the uh, actual result in real life. Now, I'm visiting the Met Office website, uh, which is actually one of the websites which was listed in the search results, apparently returned by DuckDuckGo. Now, we can see that, and for matter of fact, our chain was 100% correct and our agent got the right answer. The weather is indeed six degrees in New York City. And looking at the forecast for the rest of the day, we can see that it has a reasonably accurate depiction of how the rest of the day is going to look. Let's now look at turning this chain from a simple Python script into something that we might be able to use uh, as an endpoint from an API. The way we're going to achieve this is with LangServe. In order to upgrade this Python script into a LangServe project, we're going to need to import a few more things. First of all, let's start off by importing the following objects. We're going to import FastAPI as the base for our API, a Pydantic base model, the LangServe add roots function, and from typing module, we're going to import any. And the use of all of these will become clear in a moment. What we're going to want to do is scroll down past all of our current code. Now you can choose to leave in uh, if name equals main, but remember this will run every time you want to start up the API. So for the moment, I'm going to remove it. What we're going to want to start off with is defining some inputs and outputs for our API to expect. And we're going to do this within Pydantic. Um, we're going to create an input class, which is going to accept a string named input. And we're going to define an output class, which is going to also output. Uh, in our case, we can expect it to output a string, but it could also output any type. Next, what we're going to do is define our fast API app. We're going to say app equals fast API, and then we're going to define some attributes. These are going to be the title of the API, and we're going to call this our duck, duck, go agent. We're going to say it has a version of 1.0, and we're going to give it a short description. These are all vanity and they aren't entirely necessary. You can also just define fast API as an empty object. But for sake of completeness, we are going to be listing some of these things so that our documentation is complete. We're going to say that this is an API for serving a Langchain agent that can access the web. Next, we're going to want to be using our LangServe add routes function to add our agent to the API as an endpoint that we can then access later. This is going to look like calling the add routes function, specifying our fast API app, and then taking our agent executor and using the dot with types method and the dot with config method to transport it into something that can then accept a or expect an input of our input class, output an output of our output class, and is going to use an agent config. Finally, we're going to set the path to slash agent. So then if we want to query this API, the endpoint will be our IP and our port followed by slash agent. The last thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our API can start up when we run our script. And this is going to be done with another if name equals main. This time we're going to import uvicorn, which is a way of running fast API apps. And we're going to say uvicorn.run our fast API app, hosting it on localhost with port 8000. Now, if we go back into our terminal, we can actually rerun our exact same script, but this time it's going to start a LangServe API. 
Once your LangServe server is started, you'll be directed to access it via the localhost at port 8000. What we're going to want to do though is go visit localhost 8000 at the slash agent slash playground endpoint in order to access a simple UI. Let's go into Chrome and take a look. When we load up that address, we can see that we can access the LangServe playground and it's going to be expecting us to give an input in order to start our chain. Now, let's try asking the same question that we have been this entire tutorial. What is the weather in New York? We click start. We're actually going to see a lot of the arbitrary steps, uh, the intermediary steps, which are going to take place in between uh, submitting our query and receiving our response. You can see that we end up with a action which has been defined we're going to be wanting to call this action um, or call this tool with our query whether in new york we're then going to be as one of the steps of uh, receiving the full list of information from duckduckgo this is going to include snippets of text from the actual web pages that we're querying and also links to the web page itself this can be useful because in another context, you might want to know not just where the LLM is getting its information or what the information is, but you actually want to know where the information is coming from for reliability and trust. Finally, if we scroll down to the bottom of our output, we can see that we have the output in our final answer tag as the weather in New York City is currently 12 degrees with sunny intervals changing to cloudy by lunchtime. And because we've just checked on the uh, Met Office website, we know that that's correct and that our API is working as expected. You might be asking why we're receiving all of this information uh, using the LangServe Playground when before we're testing as a script, we were just receiving a final response. It's worth noting that when you actually run this as a Python request um, in a Python request script, for instance, you won't actually receive all of this response, you'll just receive the important bit at the end. Let's create a pie test that's going to demonstrate that. To get started testing uh, accessing your API via Python requests library, what we're going to want to do is create a new file. Now, since this is just a test, we're going to place it within inside our Langchain Zero to Hero Agents folder, but inside the tests folder as opposed to source. We're just going to name this test.py. And inside this, we're going to want to import the requests module. Now, what we're going to want to do is create a simple uh, post request. And what this request is going to do is access our agent. And we're going to be using the slash invoke endpoint in order to invoke the agent. And we're going to be passing in the uh, structured JSON that our agent is expecting. Now, the way that LangServe works is you're going to want to specify your input. And then within that, you're going to want to specify a, another dictionary, which is going to contain all the inputs expected by your LLM chain. So again, that means our JSON request is going to look like a single um, dictionary with a single key named input. And then the value of that input key is going to be all of the uh, parameters expected by our LLM chain, which also just so happens to be named input. We're going to be asking the question, what is the weather in New York? Again, just so that we can validate that the response is correct. And then to log this to the terminal, we're going to want to be reprinting the response.json, which is going to be another dictionary object. Now we want to keep our current terminal running since that contains our LLM server. So instead, we're going to want to create a new terminal. And what we're going to want to run is poetry run Python. And then we're going to want to access our tests folder and our test.py file. And once we run that, what's going to happen in the background is our API. If we move to our API folder, you can see that we've actually received a new request uh, to our invoke endpoint. It's going to run in the background all the intermediate steps and return a response. And the response that we're actually going to receive is going to be a, uh, another dictionary. And inside our output key, there's going to be another value with output again, because that's what the 
um, output class was that we defined in our LangServe API. And the actual output value is going to be, as expected, that the weather in New York is six degrees, with some other information about what the forecast is going to be in the future. Now, using this simple script, you can access your API in anything. You can integrate this into a Streamlit chatbot app. You could use it um, in any other sort of situation. And also, I'm sure you can start to think of ways that you can start to extend the tooling, either providing more tools, or maybe you want to integrate with Google as opposed to DuckDuckGo. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. There's a lot more to Langchain since when this series first started, so be sure to comment down below what you'd like me to focus upon next. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Happy coding.